Hello my friends, my name is Betsy and today I'm going to be sharing with you the best art advice I've received over the last three decades. Now I'm also going to be drawing inside of my art journal here and so I would love it if you went and grabbed some paper and a pen or maybe an art journal of your own and if you doodled along with me while I create something new inside of my art journal. So let's go ahead and get started with the first piece of advice I received. And this was, don't take yourself too seriously. Now this interesting little nugget, I think I picked up gradually when I was going to high school. And this would have been back in the late 90s because I graduated from high school back in 2003. Um, and back at that time, I did take a few art classes so that was very interesting i learned a lot during those classes a little bit about shading and pencils and how to use some charcoal it was a very nice experience but unfortunately at the time because i was fresh i suppose to the art scene and i was just learning what unfortunately happened is i started taking things very very seriously and i started thinking oh i i have to get really good Oh, what if I don't get good? People are going to think that I'm an awful artist. I really, really thought that people were going to be judging me back and forth. People were going to be thinking that I was an awful artist and that it, I was just a waste of time. It was, it was very stressful. And I know that I'm not the only one who thinks this way. And so, unfortunately, because I was taking things so seriously, sometimes I just didn't create. I stayed away from the very thing that I loved. I stayed away from the thing that could actually make me happy. And so what I had to learn over the years, and I didn't actually learn to apply this until after I left high school, until I started my life as an adult and I had to pay my own bills and pay my own rent and just take care of everything. It wasn't until then that I learned to not take my art journey so seriously. I had to let go of all of those negative emotions. I had to let go of the feeling that I was just responsible for this huge thing. And once I stopped taking it so seriously, once I stopped, in a sense, taking myself so seriously, I learned to make art for the fun of it. And now this isn't going to apply to everyone. I think it just specifically applied to me because in my case, my fear of failure was stopping me from creating. And this might also apply to you. So if you are going through some of that, if you are having a lot of apprehension about what you'll create, if you're looking at that blank page and thinking, oh, I don't know what to put there. I just don't know. Some of it might simply be that you're taking it too seriously. And so having said that, I want to move on to something else that also applies to this. It's a little different, so we'll, we'll talk it out right now. So that second piece of advice is one that you've probably heard a lot all over the internet and social media from probably a whole lot of other artists, and that's number two, you do not need expensive art supplies. So over the years, I figured this out. I always knew, I think I always knew, that I did not need expensive art supplies. And I even give this advice to a lot of people. You know, don't use anything complicated. Don't buy any expensive art journals. Don't get pricey pens or pricey markers. There's no need for that. I tell people that all the time and I tell myself that all the time. And yet, sometimes I go to the store, and sometimes you might go to the store, and there are these shiny new pens up there looking absolutely amazing and you know that you want them i look at them and i pick them up and i touch them and i look around feeling just a little guilty not too guilty but a little bit thinking oh do i deserve these do i want these and you know what sometimes i do get them sometimes i pick them up and i say yep these are coming home with me it's time but truthfully most of the time i have learned but if I look at something and I think I'm falling in love and I think I want it, I don't actually need it. If I really think long and hard about it, I come to realize and recognize that 
that fancy shiny new thing that's going to cost me 10, 15, 20 bucks, I'm not actually going to use it. I'm not going to use that jar of fancy new clear acrylic gesso. I'm not going to use those fancy brushes, those new pens, those expensive micron pens even. I'm not going to use them. Experience has taught me that the more money it costs, yes, sometimes those things are amazing. But if I want to create, I just need simple, simple art supplies, simple paper. And that way I can create without feeling guilty about anything. And no, I'm not saying that you have to feel guilty. It's not necessary. It's just that was an emotion that I was having at the time. And I'm just sharing it here because somebody else might also be feeling that way. And so in my case, not buying expensive art supplies really helped me create more. So I just use paper now and I just use inexpensive pens and all of that is tied to not taking things too seriously. And so because of that, I've been able to create so much more. So let's move on to number three. And this one is very interesting. And number three is inspiration is not free. Now this one I heard from a friend of mine who also created art and he was amazing at what he did and I just really admired the work that he did. This was many years ago. And one thing that I learned from the way that he worked on his art was that inspiration is not free. And what this means is that if you want your muse to tap dance her dainty little self over to you and give you all sorts of inspiration for creating new and wonderful art, then you need to keep her healthy. So what this means is that you need to put the work into going out and looking for things that are going to inspire you. And if what this means is that you need to go to a library to look at some art books, then you can do that. You could even go to a museum. You can do that. You can simply go online and look at other people's artwork that inspires you. Watch videos about amazing artists who you, whose work you really love. And this could inspire you, but it's not just this. It's not just looking. Part of feeding that inspiration, part of keeping your artistic muse alive and healthy is also doing. So there were many times when I felt like I simply could not draw anything. I simply couldn't paint anything. Why? Why was this? I couldn't make anything. <clears throat> what I realized is that I wasn't keeping my muse healthy. I was simply waiting for the inspiration to just show up and say, here I am, let's do it. But if I hadn't really created anything in months or even years, then my muse, my artistic inspiration wasn't going to simply show up out of nowhere. I needed to start actually making something. And that first thing that I made wasn't going to be the greatest. That was okay. But then I was going to try again. And then my muse would start getting healthier and then the ideas started coming. And so this piece of advice came, became very important for me. I had to really learn to apply it day in and day out. Now, of course, this doesn't have to apply to you. You don't have to work on your art every day. You don't have to work on it all the time. You can allow years to pass because your goals in creating art may be different than mine. I have been a lifelong artist. It has been an integral part of my identity to create art. But this may not be the case for you. You may simply be drawing or creating because you just want to do a little something something that is healthy. You just want to do something that keeps your hands busy. You just want to make some doodles and that's fine. Art is different for everybody. The process of creation is different for everybody. And so in my case, I really felt that I needed to be inspired more often because it was just so helpful for me. And so when I started creating on the daily, that's when I realized that I was able to create pieces that I could really be proud of. And of course, that's not to say that I've gained any kind of perfection in my pieces. There's still so much to learn. And that's actually what makes me excited 
That's what excites me to draw more, to use those pens, to finish up those sketchbooks. I'm excited for it because right now my artistic muse is pretty healthy and she shows up every day just like I do and we keep each other company. So having said that, the next thing that I'm going to add is number four. And this one hopefully doesn't scare you off too much. I'm not trying to be mean, but this one I heard only a couple of years ago and it kind of was a little rough. So here's what it is. Number four, you have no one but yourself to blame. <laughs> so like I said, I'm not trying to say this in any negative way. And I know the word uh, blame kind of carries a negative connotation and that's not what I mean at all. When I say blame, I suppose I say responsibility. You are responsible for the outcomes. So if you want to be artistic, if you want to be creative, then you need to take responsibility for actually being artistic and actually being creative. Sit down with your pen and your piece of paper and actually create something. Don't worry about how perfect or magnificent or awe-inspiring it's going to be, but just to make it. Like right now, I'm showing you how I'm drawing right here. You're, you're watching it come together a little bit at a time. Try to see if there's anything in my drawing that you'd like to recreate. Just a little piece. You don't have to make the whole thing if you don't have the time for it, but if you find some little piece that you think, oh, that looks nice, try it out. And you don't have to credit me for that at all. No need for that. It's all on you because you're the one who's deciding to take that paper you're the one who's deciding to take that pen and to use your willpower and your hand to make lines on a paper. You only have yourself to blame. Now, of course, this is for the good things. If you make good things and amazing things, then you are responsible and you should feel good about that. You should feel good about the things that you accomplish. If you took a little piece of paper and you drew some pretty flowers on it and you think they look lovely, then you were, responsible, you were responsible for that, and you should feel amazing. If you made a drawing that doesn't look so hot, it's a bit squiggly and you're not exactly happy with it, yes, you were responsible for that, but you should still feel proud. And you should learn something from it and take that into your next drawing. So like I said, you don't need to feel negative about this. It sounds a little bit rough when it's said that way with the word blame, but your artistic journey is going to have highs. It's going to have lows. Sometimes you're going to be happy with what you create. Sometimes you're not going to like what you create and that's absolutely normal. Sometimes you're going to be on top of the world and you're going to feel like you're the most amazing artist ever. And that's a good feeling. You should take that with you. Even if all you did was make a very tiny little drawing, but if for you it was an accomplishment, then you should celebrate those high points in your artistic journey. And sometimes you're going to have low points where you feel like all week, anything you create is just going to be garbage. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. It doesn't matter. Learn from it. Learn from the things that you do, because in the end, what you learn or don't learn is entirely up to you. So I say this mostly because I want you to feel good about yourself. If you are here right now drawing along with me, if you went and you grabbed that paper and you decided to make something, maybe you're drawing something different, maybe some flowers or some rainbows, or some teddy bears, that was you. You are doing that. So good on you. I'm really proud of you. And so I would like to tell you the very last piece of advice that somebody shared with me. And this one, this one was really important for me. This advice I received from a ceramic instructor who wasn't even my teacher. He was just one of the ceramic teachers who was in the studio uh, when I was taking a class many years ago. And his name was Michael, I still remember. And he was so amazing. He used to watch me work all the time. And I was in there, honestly, every day for hours during class and outside of class. I worked and worked and worked in that ceramic studio for hours and hours. And it, it was a huge learning experience for me. And in working with him and in asking him for his advice, pretty much on the daily, 
He noticed a pattern in the way that I worked, and one day he simply came up to me and he told me this. He said, the reason you make so much progress is because you work through the hard parts. And I was just so astounded that he would simply bring this up in conversation. He would just say it. I didn't ask him for this, and it didn't sound like advice, but over the years as I thought about this thing that he told me, it is advice. So if we were to reframe that, I would say, if you want to make progress, you need to work through the hard parts. And I think that that's absolutely true. Over the years, over all the different artistic endeavors that I have attempted and honestly enjoyed, I've enjoyed all of them. I have worked with yarn, so I know how to crochet and I know how to knit. That took me years to develop and to master. I know how to draw in charcoal. I can draw in ink, as you can see here, that's my current love. I've always loved ink. I know how to work with pencils. I know how to draw with paint. So I have a lot of different paints. I have uh, so many things in my house that I work with. I can make clothing. And I know there's a couple of other things. There's just way too much. I'm one of those people who just tries it all. And that's okay. I try a little bit of everything and it's just something that helps me keep my mind and my hands busy. And in every single one of these endeavors, every single one of these art forms that I have attempted, every time I sculpted something, every time I, I built something, I always worked through the hard parts. Whenever it became difficult for me, whenever I was just at wit's end and felt that there was just no way, absolutely no way I was going to fix this, that's when I sat down and said, no, I can fix this. I can figure this out. And sometimes what that required of me was to scrap the whole thing and start all over. Sometimes what it meant was that I needed to be patient and give myself another evening or another day to think about it and then come back to it and do it all over again and work through those hard parts, work through those difficulties. Whenever it becomes uncomfortable or just almost feels like you just can't do it, that's when you got to push through and you're going to learn stuff. I know I did. I certainly did. So when you see me here with this pen drawing like it's the easiest thing in the world, it isn't easy. Learning to draw lines on a paper isn't easy. Some people might think that it is, but it's really just coming from experience. It's coming from practice. And so you see me here creating lines and dots. I've done this for years. I worked through it even when I created drawings that looked like at, like they were just not good. They were awful. Drawings that I just looked at him and said, you're going in the trash can. And it wasn't out of hatred or anything. It just, it happened. Sometimes I scribble something on a piece of paper and it's just a learning experience. And then I move on and I try it again. And if that doesn't work, I try it again. And if that still doesn't work, I still try it again and I don't give up. And so this piece of advice of working through the hard parts I actually think applies to life overall. Yes, I know I'm giving you guys art advice. I'm sharing with you all of the little nuggets of advice that I've gotten over the years that have helped me become a better artist. But truthfully, all these things that I've shared with you actually apply to life, I think. Yeah, yes, I'm going to say that. It applies to life. Don't take everything so seriously. Don't get expensive stuff. Inspiration isn't free. You've got no one but yourself to blame. And lastly, work through the hard parts. All of this really applies to life overall. And so if you're here with me, doodling, drawing, participating in this conversation, just keep those things in mind. And of course, you don't have to do anything that I say here. I'm not telling you that I'm right. These are just things that have helped me over the years. They've helped me be a better artist. They've helped me have a better workflow. They've helped me at school, actually. 
made a better student of me. They've made a better life partner out of me. These are things that I've picked up over the years from other artists, from other people in my life that really meant a lot to me. And I'm here now sharing them with you because there is a chance that a few of them might help you. That a few of them might mean something to you, that something here might click with you. And you might think, wow, I, I should try that. I could try that. And if any of that helps you be just a little bit happier, a little bit more content, then that's perfect. If just one person can hear something here and it can help them, absolutely perfect. That's going to make me so happy. So if you're an artist and you're struggling a little bit, if you are thinking that you don't really know what to do, you don't really know, you don't really know how you should get started, and you're just afraid that what you're going to make is going to be trash, don't worry about it. Go ahead and just scribble some shapes on a piece of paper. Have fun. I encourage you to try different things and show your creativity. I'm here to encourage you to try your best and to be okay with a failure. I have been a teacher my whole life and that's all that I've ever told people. It's okay to fail. You are still worthy as a person even if you fail. And so here we are. If you are watching uh, the screen, I am finishing up this drawing right now because I didn't want to fill in that last piece at the end. I'm kind of just filling it in with this, these squiggly lines to make a gradient at the bottom, a little bit of a shadow. And I'm hoping that you take some of this advice with you and that you go home and you create and that you are an artist. So thank you so much for joining me on this little journey. Thank you so much for drawing along with me. Thank you so much for being here and joining in on this conversation. If you have any great advice that you came across during your journey as an artist or honestly just in life, if you have any great advice that you would like to share, share them in the comments section. Please, I'd love to hear from you. I think it would be a great experience to see what other people have to say. If you think that any of my advice might not be helpful to someone, let me know as well. Like I said, these are just things that I've learned over the years and I wanted to share with others.